Welcome back, everyone. The decision by Poland to stop sending weapons to Ukraine could impact its counteroffensive against Russia. The Polish Prime Minister said the reason is, quote, we are now arming Poland. It comes during an intense standoff over grain imports between the two allies. Poland has been one of Ukraine's closest, as well as most vocal allies. It was the first NATO country, if you remember, to send fighter jets to Ukraine after Russia's invasion. Earlier, I spoke with the Ukrainian government advisor and former defence minister. Now, I want to get you the Polish side. Radek Sigorski is a member of the European Parliament, a former Polish defence minister and former marshal of Poland's parliament. Mr Sikorski, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. I, I want to get first your assessment, your analysis of what, what you, how you see the tit for tat here, the decision by Prime Minister to no longer arm Ukraine. Was this the right decision? I'm not sure it's even a decision. The government spokesman has qualified by saying that existing contracts are being honoured. And of course, Poland will not shut down the uh, American um, uh, uh, lift to uh, Ukraine. But, you know, everybody is short on stocks in Western Europe and in the United States because we haven't ramped up uh, production. But those words were still unhelpful. So why not say it? Giving... So why not say that? Because that may give Putin the impression that uh, the West is about to crack and that if he persists, he, he could win. But the other aspect of this, which I'm sure you'll tell me and what I've heard today from our co correspondent in Warsaw, is that politics is clearly at play here. Uh, perhaps a gesture to Polish sure. farmers. But I was under the impression there was consensus in Poland over Ukraine yes. and, 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 and to stay with Ukraine and see it through. Absolutely. I'm the spokesman for foreign affairs of the main opposition party, and we support the government in its policy of helping Ukraine. Uh, but the government uh, failed in organizing uh, transit corridors for Ukrainian grain to Africa and China. Uh, uh, farmers are angry, and uh, it's uh, putting the blame on the European Union and, and Ukraine when it, uh, it, its own competence, incompetence is to blame. Uh, and it's also uh, vying for votes in our nasty election campaign for uh, right wing fr against the right wing fringe uh, anti Ukrainian party. Right. So political tactics is what you're saying here. But at the heart of this, is your first point, is is the grain, the fact that Ukrainian grain flooded the Polish market. Just explain to our viewers around the world what that has done to Polish grain, the price of grain, and to the farmers trying to sell it critically? Well, the average land holding in Poland is 10 hectares, whereas Ukraine has these Texas-sized farms and some of the best soil in Europe, uh, which is why the European Union had, has had restrictions on uh, the import of Ukrainian grain. Obviously, we want to help Ukraine earn the money to continue to resist, uh, but Ukrainian grain previously was sold in Africa and China. So when Putin put the blockade in the Black Sea, um, the idea was to have these uh, solidarity corridors, transit yeah. corridors across Poland and across the European Union. But unfortunately, the, Polish, the current Polish government failed to organize them. And we've seen Slovakia, they've lifted its grain restrictions and, and established what they're calling a, a grain trade system with Ukraine. Would that work for Poland? My other question is, where is the EU in all of this? Can they help out? Well, the EU can help upgrade uh, a port and railway facilities. And Poland should have asked the, the EU for help with that. And also with the cost of transporting grain over land, which is higher than, uh, than uh, across the sea. And here, if Poland had a better relationship with Brussels, um, it could all have been done a year ago. But the current government uh, has a sort of cold war with the European Union. They failed to do it. And now they're blaming Ukraine, which is innocent in this. And so, I mean, the language from both sides has been quite colourful. I think we can call it that. But if the prime minister's decision, decision, you know, holds past the elections, obviously, when it comes to, to, um, to arms and so forth to Ukraine. It, does that, do you think that will impact the war in Ukraine and the unity with its allies? 
Well, I hope we, the opposition, will win the general election on the 15th of <laughs> October. We'll have a more competent government and we'll resume our close alliance with, the, with Ukraine. And if, and if you win, what is the solution to this grain, to the, to this grain dilemma? What are, what, what are you telling voters? We will end Poland's Cold War with the European Union and find a good European solution so that Ukraine can sell its uh, grain, where, uh, but Polish farmers don't bear the brunt of solidarity for all of Europe with but Ukraine. But what is that? My question is, what is that solution? Would it work with something is, what Slovakia said, has to done? upgrade Polish railway and port facilities and to help with the cost of the transit. I and it's Radek Sikorsky, doable. I appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. Thank you very much, sir. My pleasure.